I don't know why I did that, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, we were doing it again. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just going to sit with it. Sorry, that'll go in the outtakes room. <laughs> uh, so, we'll start from there. <laughs> Alright, okay. So, we're just out for kick ass to. Which is it, how long's it been out? It's been it was it last week. It only came out like last, last week? Thursday or something. Last Thursday. See, it's real surprising because generally we go on a Tuesday, and this was the first Tuesday after it coming out. Yeah, it's actually pretty quiet. Can yeah, well, t- well, it did start at one o'clock, and the schools are back in. Ah, oh, fuck so. yeah, true. It's gonna be pretty. No, but usually it's still busier than Aye, but that on the Tuesday, but. I guess enough. But I'm you're probably right. It's probably it's probably all the, sc- yeah, the, all the schools are back in. So, so I did say that to you, and I was like, ah, I think this is a 12 eight. No, it's, the last one was an 18. I'm like, oh, that doesn't necessarily mean that the sequel is going to be. Uh, I mean, 15. Look, I was at, close. look at the state that Die Hard's in these days. Yeah, right. But, yeah, very true. But it was a 15, and we both kind of looked at each other and just. Went, oh, yeah. but to be honest with you, you don't really, you don't really. It didn't really make much of a difference. It didn't really make much of a difference. I mean... If the hit girl didn't say cunt, which is a bit... Uh, <laughs> but, uh, It was still pretty violent in places. But Aye, it some bit... Generally, the only one I complain about the violence was, it was the digital blood spotting it rather than... Cause it, didn't, it doesn't look too bad sometimes. It just looks like fucking mist or mm-hmm. just something... <laughs> but, but obviously it's getting no weight or gravitas to it but Aye, there's points where you're just like oh, it's she's just, just been squibs or in she's just been squibs there's no need for it but um what did you think of it? I like in fact no sorry sorry tell me what you think of the first one first before we get into this I really enjoyed the first one just because it's not really a superhero movie <laughs> <laughs> it's just about some poor wee bugger who gets his arse kicked nine times out of ten does the same in this movie. <laughs> uh, but uh, I really, I do quite like the first one. I really mm. enjoyed it, for the most part. But uh, and I think what makes it is the like, the characters in the first one. So you you get this tiny wee lassie brutalising people and swearing at her arse and all the rest of it. Mm. And Nicholas Cage is in it. Yeah. <laughs> He's also in this one as well. Very. Very, very briefly very in the background briefly. via picture. Yeah. <laughs> Smiling at that scene. As soon as I seen that man, I just got a cackle out. Yeah. Um, for me, to be honest with you, what I thought of the first one is pretty much parallel to what I thought about this one. In terms of, I think this is the, the origin story of how I get accused of hating everything. It's because I think it was, I think it was in your house and basically it was me, you, Gav, John, and Jamie. And Gav was talking to me about something, and then Kickass came in, and I was like, I don't like Kickass. Like, you just hate everything. <laughs> and I'm like, right, okay, I think that's where it came from. But it's, fine. Uh, it's, like, it's no that I think it's shite or anything. Like that. And I said this as well. It's like to me, it's it's a homage and it's like a love letter to basically comic book movies, mm. as in it's basically like what Edgar Wright does with like fucking zombie movies with Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz with uh, action cop movies. Uh, Action cop movies be hot fuzz. Yeah. It's kind of just like playing on that universe and playing on the tropes and playing on the cliches and stuff like that. But yeah. obviously, no ridicule in it. They're actually embracing the stupidity uh-huh. with the greatness of it. Yeah. But that's all fine and dandy. But the problem is, I'm not into comic books whatsoever. <laughs> know what I mean, so that's kind of oh, lost but... on me. And that's that's generally what my take on these films are. Is <laughs> they're lost on me. They really are. It's like the wit and the wit and the, the references and. Basically, like wee nods and silly nods, stuff like that. It's completely lost. I mean, I'm aware of what they are, but it doesn't mean you go, oh, but uh, the first one, I thought it really did bore me because of that. But once, spoilers if you've not seen it, but if, once Big Daddy died, that's when for, it got really interesting for me. Because as much as I did like Nicolas Cage, it was kind of for me, it was just, it was just faffing about until the consequences and basically. Shit got real, basically. Uh, that, that moment where shit get real mm-hmm. is the exact same thing that happened in here. It was like maybe halfway through the second act, maybe getting into the third, the third act of both movies, actually, mm-hmm. is when something Things dramatically, a, a key <laughs> character dies and it follows the narrative go on from there. And the action sequences are amazing in both films. Yeah. So that's really I don't think they were as good as in, so. in this one, though. Hmm? I don't think they were as good as well, in this one, though. Yeah. 
still pretty decent. So the second one takes off how long after the first one? Oh, it must be quite a while because Hit Girl's what, 15 or something now? Mm -hmm. I think it's funny because she actually looks older than Kickass, than the guy that plays Kickass does. I said that, that, really I said that, said that. Like, near enough to start, like, the guy that plays Kickass somehow looks younger. <laughs> he didn't. I think it was the hair, because his hair just got bigger. I think that's what uh, it, it might be that, might be that. But it was bloody funny. Our, she's got, that last at place, that girl, she's got the weirdest lips ever, by the way. It's uh, really distracting. I just can't fucking look at them. They're just really strange. It must but, have um, something to do with Parentage. So it takes no a bit a bit after. That. I, I think I, I don't know. I'll, don't quote me on this. I think she's either between eight and ten in the first one. Mm -hmm. So she's grew a bit of fit and height put it that way. Uh, <laughs> and and you know, uh, she's really tiny forever, which I think kind of takes away from the character. That it's just a uh, an average height teenage lassie mm. instead of a wee girl beating the crap out of a gigantic monster. She's still the focal point of the movie. Yeah, though. She's uh, she, more the scene, so than this one. She's still the scenes, uh, scene fucking stealer in this film more as well, which was way more so one, of, one. one of my, my critiques about the first one was that Kick-Ass was really just a sidekick. Second fiddle, eh? Which, again, he is in this one as well when it comes back into play. It is actually quite focused on. It's a lot more focused on him now in this mm. one. That's the difference between the two of them. Is well, it kind of... It kind of flip flops between the two of them, I think, mm. because it's got him. Well, there is still more of it than there is more Aye. focus on him. He's more of the main narrative. That it still is ha probably half and half. I'd Aye, say about there, eh? But um, well, for a film called Kickass, Kickass wasn't really. So the, you liked it, but just not as much as the first one. Yeah, I quite liked it. I, uh, it did get kind of slow in some places, and I think just the way it was structured was a bit weird. Mm -hmm. Story wise, it was just get. Yeah. <laughs> well, you heard, my, you heard my critique while we were, we were sitting watching it. You fucking then. yawned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking boring, man. Like. <laughs> what was I saying that for again? Oh, um, I'm pretty sure it was during. Was it no when uh, she was talking to the other teenage lassies? Probably. Be with but, them. Um, that was what I, that was where it, the, I was done with the film. Really, I really <laughs> was getting to the point. I'm like, I'm done with this movie and. Basically, the biggest problem with this one is um, basically Hit Girl's getting brought up by. Is that her uncle? Or no, it's her a, dad's, her best dad's pal, pal or something dad's like that. Best pal. And basically, he's just wanting her to drop Hit Girl all the fucking gather. And, uh, and be a normal boring and lassie. And she'd be a normal boring lassie. And essentially, that's her arc in this. Yeah. And for me, the, like you said, the appeal of the first one is Hit Girl. It really is. She's the star of the fucking show. And in this one, they pretty much just take away everything that you enjoyed in the first one for the majority of the movie. Because she basically just ditches the whole thing. Mm -hmm. but against their own will. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. They still stay to the character that she's really stubborn and she's in her own ways and stuff like that. And she's, she's who she thinks she is. But she makes a promise and fucking tries to ditch it on. And you get like fucking... I did love the parody of uh, One Direction. It was, uh, what were they called? Was it Union J or something? Union J? Like that? I, I don't Union even know if that's, that might be a fucking uh, actual boy basically, band. It basically it turns into like fucking mean girls. Oh yeah. It just basically turns into mean girls for about 25 minutes. Oh, and that wee lassie sitting... says, I'm soaked. I was like, what? Was essentially, <laughs> honestly, when you go into kick ass, you expect to see, oh, you know what you expect to see. see get to see, like I said, fucking geeking out on comic action, fucking seeing all these cool action sequences and a bit of violence and stuff like that. What I did not expect to see is basically a bunch of fucking 14, 15, 16 year olds sitting dressed in fucking hot pants and fucking training taps and doing some really some seductive dances while uh, songs about cherry poppings going on in the fucking background. Yep. Making me sit there going, I feel really horrible right now. <laughs> I, I horrible. think I said to you, what the fuck is this? And you're like, what, the music or the fucking, it's like, this. That I can feel my brain cells basically dying inside me. I've got aye. It was aye. really horrible. And then after it, it was, I'll, I'll give you thingy, one positive is, um, she basically goes through the whole stick of that she needs to try and be normal and blah 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 and she finds out that her childhood's gone. Yeah. Big Daddy pretty much just skipped all that shit for her and she seems to be very thankful for it by the end of it. But oh, she yes. goes through the whole motions of trying to become, to become a normal girl and she finds out that fucking bitches can be horrible. And uh, 
Aye, it's turned you, and I just went like that there after it because there's like this big betrayal part, and you're, I just turned around you, and I just like, oh, well, that was. I think I yawned as well. I think that was when I yawned, and like, that was 25 minutes that went fucking nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I will, I will give you, there was a really sweet moment that happens between her and Kickass when he wakes up in bed and she's Aye, she at the window and she breaks in she, she breaks breaks there is a really sweet moment there I'll I'll, I'll be it is really it is it probably one of the better scenes in the movie mm-hmm. to be honest with you but for 25 minutes of screen time and just like really could have done without it and essentially I could have been doing with more fucking Jim Carrey in it because <laughs> I only I, I kind of got it spoiled for me in terms of that I only knew he was only going to be in it for about 10-15 minutes Aye. Because I, I love Jim Carrey, I really do, but he didn't really have much to do in this movie. He kind of was basically, he was like Big Daddy in a way of terms of like... The father figure. The father figure, and basically he's this one that sets up this kind of like Justice well, League. Father figure might not be the, the mentor. The mentor, yeah. That's the sen- the sensei, the sensei, the, the almighty all-known sensei. Starts up the Justice League basically, or uh, Justice Forever, I think. Aye, uh, Justice right? Forever. And uh, he's like an ex mafia fucking. Aye, uh, enforcer. Enforcer person, he basically quits. He fucking fucking breaks legs, becomes a born again Christian. His dog, uh, what was his dog called? Eisenhower. Eisenhower, the Call of Duty dog. Schwanz. Uh, yeah, he has got a good few moments in it, mm. and I just lo- I love seeing him having up. He obviously embraced it, but. Until he Until, after the filming was done, yeah. and he went, "No, I don't." I don't as much as I do love Jim Carrey, it was just like, really. I mean, I don't know the ins and outs of it. I think there was like some sort of it was a, fucking massacre a school or something shooting, in our school shooting, and he said, "No, I can't condone this kind of violence. I can't promote it." It's, it's a film. It really it's bugs me when people bring movie violence and fantasy violence and video game violence into real violence. Yes, it's no, exactly. It's, it's things it's that two completely it's different things. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. These aren't the problem. It's the problem of the people that fucking don't tell the difference or they've got fucking internal problems. It's not the key. It's not the end all be all fucking... Yeah. Of if he felt that strongly schools. about it, he should have give, gave all of his And the fact that, no, I mean, they said that after he'd made the movie, and I'm just like, well, he could have came out and says like, ah, well, whatever I make from the movie, whatever, I'll donate, donate to the families if yes. I really care that much. Or, uh-huh. No, I mean, it's just like, it's, it seemed a wee bit fucking thingy to me. Just a bit squiggly. Yeah. And, so, and that and the fact that he must have seen the first one and seen how violent the first one yes. was in order to fucking Definitely. say enough. Apparently the no, reason I mean, he no. wanted to be in the film is because he was a, such a big fan of the first one. Mm-hmm. So, as much as they love you, Jim Carrey, it's kind You're of... being a hypocritical kind of bit of of <laughs> shit. But uh, he was good in the movie. Mm-hmm. He was really good in the movie. I like Donald Trace on it. Ah, oh, he was such a <laughs> dark man. It was brilliant. <laughs> it was br- See, he was, even though he, he didn't really get that much in the way of lines or anything, uh, just when... He did, sell, he did sell his character, though, man. He was genius in that character. He pretty much sold it. <laughs> yeah, he really did. And uh, my other favourite character was definitely Mother Russia. Because mm-hmm. she terrified yeah. me. She was basically terrified. Basically fucking big drago and drag, basically. Aye. That's essentially what it Except was. Except I'm more scared of her than I was a drag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they use her to the full extent. She's basically Aye. the big heavy of the She is group. the heavy. But she is. The, the toxic... Mega cunts. Mega cunts or something like that. That is, the, that's the, what it is. It's the toxic mega cunts. They are really fucking awesome, man. They were actually Aye. pretty cool. Sadly, Mother Russia was the only one that really got... Lines, any set pieces or lines mm-hmm. or anything like that. The rest of them yeah. were just kind of there. Background characters, yeah. Except for like the black, the black death they call them. The guy looks kind of like the predator <laughs> when he's a gosh man. Looks a little woolly. <laughs> <laughs> just a bit. Uh, and uh, the thing he was my favourite. Uh, he was little. What was it? He was little and dangerous. He was basically Tumor. like a wee, be- a wee beg be fucking Gary for the Tumor. transport him. And he's sitting there thinking that name is just like. Tuber. Tuber. <laughs> little and dangerous. Uh, five foot four, but he just little loves dangerous. murdering people. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, the, the Yakuza guy. Oh, he was brilliant in that movie, man. The guy, yeah. I forgot his name. McLovin. He was fucking brilliant. Uh, he movie, was really man. good. He, um, was, he is pure, Christopher Mintz plan. He is a whiny wee bitch in it. But That's what makes that him is so his good. Character, that is and when he finds all his most bondage gear. <laughs> oh, he was so good. I think he might have been. I think he might have been like the. Highlight the film, really. No, oh, he did. Just for comedy, mm. at least, just for comedy. <laughs> he basically plays, uh, what's his face, Spider Man 2 and 3, fucking 
James Franco's character he essentially plays that oh, role just being butt up Harry Osborne by, aye. except he knows that he's supposed to be evil and his dad is actually evil that's the difference <laughs> but like I say Steve, there's hundreds there's of homages awesome. and stuff like because I know for a fact that they were referencing to uh, I think it's the, the Civil War arc that's in the Marvel Universe where basically vigilantes are getting captured and they're basically forced well they're not getting captured but they're getting forced to unmask themselves and the Civil War their, was a revealed their, their hidden identities was the registration thing so it was Iron Man so it was basically it was, it was registering it was referencing to that it's like it says to you they kind of take like famous arcs that are in comic book movies and then just basically put a realistic twi- uh, twist on them yeah and then put their own wee spin on it as well so I mean, like I say, people are obviously going to be marking out for that shit that are into that, but obviously it's yeah, lost on well me. I'm aware of it, I am aware of it, but yeah. it's not something I'm well read into or care about, so obviously you will love it if you just love comic books really well. But um, what another critique of mine was that, uh, see the first movie? Yeah. I can't remember a lot about it, I've only seen it <laughs> twice, right? Uh-huh. Was most of it shot indoors? I remember kick ass getting stabbed outdoors and stuff like that, but yeah. there's a lot of other a lot, scenes that A were lot indoors. of the action scenes were indoors, like uh, like there was a big warehouse fight with Big Daddy, there was the when Hit Girl gets introduced, mm-hmm. like properly introduced. First time you see her in action it's in a, it's just in a fucking mm-hmm. flat. But is there a lot of a lot of scenes where they're outdoors? No, in really. terms of action sequences or acting, no. no. Because there's quite a lot in this movie. Yeah. And as I was sitting watching, I was like, I, I don't know if it's a different uh, digital uh, director of photography mm. or if it's something to do with the lighting or stuff like that. But one of the greater things about Kick-Ass, even though I don't like the film that much, but one of the things is, see the visual, the, the visual, basically the... Presentation of the The presentation of it all. It looks fucking gorgeous. Honestly, I sat and watched it on my telly and fucking Blu-ray, and it's fucking, it is one of the most colourful films ever, right? And I'm How big's your telly again? Too big, but we'll not get into that. But um, how big is your room again? No too doubt. small. So, <laughs> so it's, it's like being fucking, in the cinema. It was really, it is a really gorgeous-looking film. And then I was sitting watching this. It's like I don't know if it's a different director or if the fucking it's a different fucking photographer that was shooting the film, but. It's not got the same pop. It's not got the yeah. same. The colours are not as vibrant, and I think it will just be because. But it's I all think I, I, that's why I was asking you is why what was it a lot indoors in the first one? It must have been because there was a lot of indoor parts in this as yeah. well. But when it goes to outdoors, there's just it's no. Quite it, it's quite bland for the first few parts of it because a lot of it's. I indoors. think it's because it's not when they're outdoors. It's not a set. Mm-hmm. You could say. I think the first one, like all the set, like all I think the it's, I, I, it's obviously I didn't notice in the first one because there's not a lot of outdoor sequences uh-huh. in it. That's why I'm asking you, but it's yeah. it's gorgeous in places, but a lot of it seems quite bland and thingy in terms of visuals. But mm. yeah, like I say, I didn't mind the movie. I actually enjoyed this one more than I did the first one, to be honest with you. But generally, that's just because. I think the last act was a lot better. I actually like the last act right up until when that girl leaves. Aye. And she ends up kissing. Aye. That made me feel really weird. I was, Aye. Like, I was not Again, expecting it to go I and... don't remember how old Kickass is. He's a lot older. I think, well, I don't think he's a lot older because they're well, still they were both... all slagging him and fucking. Uh, they're both in shit. high school though. Yeah, but one's so... at starting high school and the other's fucking. Aye, well, well, fuck, American high school, isn't it? It's only like like freshman four... and fucking thing. Aye, well, so... There's only like four years in American high school or something, isn't there? And like fucking. And it's like middle school and all that sort of shit. still very strange to be honest. Yes, with it is a wee bit pedo mm-hmm. <laughs> So. <laughs> I think that's Yeah, I didn't like that as well, actually, the fact that the whole. Part of Kickass is that he's fucking in that movie. He's pure in lesbians with this lassie, and you don't see any of her at all until one scene where she basically just dumps him. That's it. Aye, that was, was it. That was it, it totally that. negated the entire part you, of that. You see her like, walking through the canteen at one point, looking for him, and he's no there because yeah. he's ditching class. She's no and then, in this movie. <laughs> then he's just speaking to fucking hit girl, and yeah, basically hit girl point. saying, "Yeah, I'm done with fucking." And she fucking She just hears that we're done, we're through and stuff like that. Really? And really? She went, oh wait, no, I've been shagging some other guy with a bigger dick than you. Oh, oh. So I was sitting there going like ah, hold on, bitch. he's the dick even though you're the one that's shagging about. Yeah, you're you yeah. Then you just don't see her ever again. Then you don't see her ever again. I'm so just, evidently no. they just either didn't like the actress or she didn't even or either no, they that just didn't have they just had nothing for her really. So either that's how the comic went, I don't know, I've not read the comic, but 
there you go. I think the comics are a lot different for the actual Aye, adaptations well, because yeah. when I heard, when I heard the actual origin stories in the comic book movie in terms of Big Daddy Aye. starting up that whole shit with that girl, do you know the actual origin stories in the I comic? I don't remember. Do you know the re the reason is because he was bored. He was bored. He was bored. <laughs> so he endangered his fucking little girl. And his world of fucking. That's still alive as well in the comics. In the comics, yeah. Aye. Well, they changed that for the film, but when they had that in the comics, that is fucking horrible. That Aye. is disgusting. So to be that, honest with you, I think that I like the adaptation more than the original source. A lot of people are saying that. heard it. A lot of people are saying so, that. So, but again, I've not read it, so I can't really <laughs> say. But for what I've heard, it sounds as if they've done a lot better in terms of adaptation. <laughs> Oh, um, quite a few people have said that. Yeah. Angry Joe said that. Comic Book Girl 19, I think, said that mm. as well. I've not seen that. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah you fancy her, and she's got picky. Yeah, she's got picky. Yeah. She's, she's got picky. Yeah, she's got it. In my mouth. Anyway. <laughs> Unlike Night Bitch. <laughs> oh, fucking Night Bitch. What a daft name. <laughs> it's supposed to be a rape scene, isn't it? And, you know. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> it's just brilliant. How man. good was that? Bit? I fucking love motherfucker though, man. <laughs> so honestly, good. honestly, that was so funny. <laughs> I'm a lot of people were kicking up fuss about that actually. To be honest with you, the fact there's a rape scene in it, and you're just like, well, there wasn't really. Because there was a technical. There wasn't. There, there, there was. There was meant to be a rape. There was scene. a hint of it, yes. but but I think in the comic she actually does get gang raped by a whole lot of them. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. But she's what's his face? Who was that? Again? For, Mark uh, Miller. Mark Miller. Right. Uh, he's he's a. Uh, He's a twisted individual. Well, he's from Scotland, so... Aye. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> That's what I find weird about it, is it the fact that when I first seen it, I was like, I didn't like this as much as I liked Super. He's Super. I think it was you was talking to about that. It was basically me, it was Super, I liked it because it took the concept that had more teeth to it. Mm. It was mere grittiness and stuff like that, and then when I hear like you saying that there, now, it's like the comic books sound exactly like... What I'm thinking the Supers like is uh -huh. taking the concept and made it a lot more grittier, but but then again, I don't know how that would translate in terms of films and shit like that, so I don't know. Uh -huh. But um, I'd say re I'd recommend it, but the first, I'd say the, the first 40 minutes of it were pretty much. <laughs> I just set up more than anything else. Honestly, I, I'd say either go and see it or if you're like me and you didn't mind the first one, you didn't like it and you didn't hate it, you were just kind of eh, it was something to waste time with. Mm -hmm. I'd watch it but I'd skip past the first 40, 50 minutes of it, because it is an hour and 50 minutes long. So I bet these comic book movies are all way too fucking long as well. I mean this one's one of the shorter ones, but most of them are like two and a half hours long. Aye. And it's ridiculous. <laughs> That's big, big budget Marvel ones, man. Aye. This is Marv films, isn't it? <laughs> oh, fucking Marv. Who the hell's Marv? Uh, so how about yourself? Conclusion. Um, I, I quite enjoyed it. I would go see it. If you were a fan of the first one, definitely go see it. Mm -hmm. If you're a wee bit iffy, I'd still just go see it. Anyway. You don't really have to have seen the first one to see the second No, not quite. One. It, kinda, really it does, it does quite a good job of filling you in on what's going on. But uh, I'd probably still just watch the first one before you go see it to refresh your memory. Yeah, just to familiar yourself with the characters. Aye. But the, the characters, the you can kind of watch them for the get go and Aye. get what's going on. It's not exactly a like complex film. And keep your eyes out for Mother Russia. Doctor Gravity. You can't even miss the fucking mother. Of and it. diarrhea. <laughs> diarrhea. Oh, I was. I was. Oh, it was so bad though. <laughs> CG oh, was so and bad. their wee fucking idiot pal. That their uh, their ass kicker. Oh, ass kicker. That wee idiot. <laughs> oh, he was such a mongrel. <laughs> uh, I get get a bash. Do you want to talk about trailers? We had. We had meet the Millers. Me the Millers and you sat there and I was like, that looks gash and I thought you were like, it looks better than most comics. No, I didn't say it looks gash, I said it no, looks... Was said, it looks like mere, like, the cringe oh, word. cringe word, that is the word you use. And I don't really like that, I just kind of go... <laughs> I just sit and cringe and I don't laugh. <laughs> 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 yeah, there, was a, there was a couple of parts that made me laugh in the trailer, but uh, I can't even remember. Big black penis. No, it wasn't that part. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, look, it, looks, See, it doesn't look like a stoner movie. In no. terms of the fact that the main plot Oh, is wait, wait, what's face? That guy for the hangover, you got a chuckle for him. Because uh, he's got the fucking orca in his tank behind him. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, that's what I love. I've got that, lots yeah. of money. Yeah, I've got lots of money. I bought an orca. <laughs> it's just how he flings it out there. But, uh, yeah, and, uh, it's more, it doesn't seem to be a stoner movie. It seems to be more of a fucking road trip movie, Aye. family movie. So. Yeah, else, and uh, Jennifer Aniston stripping. Good Eggie Pop. <laughs> I think she's been I used to love fucking Jennifer Aniston she was one of my fucking first crushes and uh, 
I think the she's years, the years haven't been nice to her, but she seems. I to disagree. Have, she seems, I she seems she's to have quite a foxy older lady. She, she seems to have pulled it back. She looks pretty hot in that right. movie. Have you seen the neck of Courtney Cox these days? But no, nah. she's she's done something to her face. And oh she's my done God. something to her face. She's done some form of fucking cosmetic surgery. It's oh my god. She's had a leather couch surgery. <laughs> no, no. Uh, we're not going to talk about it here. <laughs> um, then we had uh, Independence Day 3. What the hell's the name of that? Uh, White House Down. Aye, White House I Down. I keep on thinking Black Hawk you, Down. You sat there and you were kind of just... Uh, and I was like, that's the general of the shit that I want to see. <laughs> and, uh, it, um, oh, it doesn't look as good as fucking Olympus is falling because it's still one of the best films I've seen this year. In, the in my mind, it's the, it is Channing Tatum, isn't it? Aye. Right, so it is, in my mind, Ray Charles and a stripper. <laughs> or a gimp <laughs> or a gimp <laughs> um, I'll still go and see if Andy's game for it but I, my I, problem I, is I've already seen it because Olympus has fallen so. yeah, I'd, be, I'd be game to go see it if you you need to see Olympus has fallen though man it's really violent. I don't need to do it you're no my real dad there's a line in it that says I am going to stab you in the brain <laughs> And he does. He stabs him in and the brain. brain. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> right, uh, what else do we have? And we had... Uh, oh, the 300 uh, one. 300. Uh, <laughs> nah, I was just sitting there. I, was like, oh. I love 300. 300 is just such a stupid drink beer, be a man film. I think it's one of the gayest films I've ever it seen. Is, it is. <laughs> it's really Fairly gay. gay. We <laughs> all <laughs> have well, we mostly naked men and whatnot. Mostly it is all naked men. They're not naked. There's no <laughs> big may as well it. be. We airbrushed abs. <laughs> Bullshit. Uh, Jerry Butler is that fit. <laughs> no, no. But aye, there's no Jerry Butler, I'm not interested. Nah. No, 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 no. Really. Pine cone beard, so I'm no interested. No, whatsoever. pretty much. Uh, I don't think the... Zack Snyder, because I say that he is, I don't think Zack Snyder uh, directed this. He couldn't have, because he couldn't have been directing this. But, did, but it did, it said, it said so it was fucking from Zack Snyder, director of 300 in Man of Steel. And producer of. And, and what? It was happened? producer of Thingy, producer of 300 in Man of Steel. It said I don't so. Know. I'd, I've tried to see you if it was directing it, but I don't think it is, because it doesn't... Yeah, it doesn't my, make... my, my thing as well is, is the fact that I had this conversation with somebody with, I didn't like 300, like, oh, well, it's, I made, it's one of the best comic book adaptations ever, and I sat and I read a couple of bits of the fucking comic, and I was like, yeah, I just don't like this comic. <laughs> it was the same when I read Sin City as well. Was, I, like, I like Sin City, and I fucking... Re- I, was just, I was just thumbing through Sin City, and I was like, this is the film. It's yeah. crazy how much, how close they can actually get to the fucking subject and that, I don't know, because oh. I was literally flicking the pages and going, I can remember these scenes. specifically these framing, that scene and what that looks like. Yep. It's so fucking close. Yep. But this, I honestly thought it was an origin story, but it's no, a, a, a prequel, sorry, a prequel. I'm pretty sure it's a sequel. It's I could be sequel. wrong. I don't know. I think it's just because, what's, it what's the tagline? 300, Rise of... Rise of an, of an Empire. Rise of Empires. I thought it was like the rise of the Spartan Empire, but no, because the Spartan Empire has already sort of established. So I think it's just I love the, the Greek this, this is how it should have ended of three hundred when they totally fuck up that we what guy. Oh right, the wee hunchback. <laughs> you could just let me fight in your army. No, but it doesn't matter because I got what is it? I can't even remember what the fuck it is. I've got uh, I've got ridiculously sensitive information in terms of how many you've had and where he's are going and what path he's and how to stick up so I'm away to go and get some bitches <laughs> well, that's essentially it yep, the whole thing could have been avoided if you know if he just fucking, murdered that hunchback if it wasn't so fucking soft <laughs> on the hunchback so bothered about being fucking ugly and the fact that they were all vain that's the only reason because there's no reason for turning them back <laughs> They, they you don't have abs, or you no. do have abs, but they're kind of uh, so no, <laughs> no, off the, your throat. The, the reason was, right, well, he had a good spear arm. He couldn't raise his shield high enough to protect protect, protect the guy next to him. And if you can't do that, the phalanx will crumble. Have you seen three hundred? Yes. There That's was none of that in that movie. There yeah, was all was. all ramping and fucking. It was all shot in a cramped studio, and they're all flipping and dancing. You're bullshitting. I remember. They're doing three sixty moves and going. <laughs> ah yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there yeah. was no fucking rounding and formation or that shit. Either was. They weren't. Most running. of that movie was all they weren't running in formation, but they weren't lined up in a fucking formation sort of thing. And if this wee fucking hunchback guy couldn't protect the guy the next day, it would just fucking collapse Or just have him at the back, trail him back, if that was a problem. Yeah. There was no reason for them to be as fucking Aye, horrible whatever. to him. Aye, shut up. So that's why I wanted the bad guys to win in that fucking movie, because yeah. they're fucking horrible people. They're all into butt sex. <laughs> Goddamn Romans. Boy shagging. Yeah. Uh, Greeks. Nah, that's pretty much it. Aye. <laughs> we, we. Bye! See you later, fuckers! <laughs>